That's when I got a proper feel of when the Kenny gets going, when the momentum starts turning and if we can get that momentum in our favour, not many teams in League 2 or League 1 would live with us. It was a brilliant day, it was, I always remember that day, everything about it. It was, when I was watching on the bench, it was, I could feel how it felt for the fans, it's, it was horrible, and then when you come on it was alright, <laughs> so it was weird. I never really thought I'd score in the Premier League. And it's in, Luke Berry! It's a fantastic finish from Luke Berry, his first Premier League goal! Bez, welcome back to Kenilworth Road. It's been three weeks now since we announced you'd be leaving after seven hugely successful years here. Uh, at the time you said you'd be too emotional to do an interview and you've been away on about five or six <laughs> holidays since. Yeah, so yeah. this is the first chance we've had to, uh, to speak to you, but um, how are you feeling now? No, I've really enjoyed my um, seven years and it's been, been a great time. I've got so many memories. Um, I could go through but it's been brilliant and um, I'm just glad that I had the opportunity to play for this club. We were down at the Braish when we announced your signing from Cambridge. Nathan obviously had sold the vision to you and I've got a quote from you here that said it's a club that's on the up, it's not settling on this and it wants to keep on improving like myself. I want to keep on improving with the club. We were in League 2 back then, <laughs> yeah. you've just finished with a couple of Premier League goals to your name before you uh, departed. Could you have envisaged it going that well? Probably not, no. Probably that was a bit um, bit too much of a dream, thinking that we were going to get into the Premier League in seven years. But I definitely thought it was on the up. I definitely knew we'd, we'd get out of League One. And I thought potentially, for sure, a good, we'll be in the Championship because the players we had at the time, we had um, uh, JJ, Stacey, we had a really, really good team and um, I couldn't have never dreamt of going again into the Premier League. Do you remember much about your debut? It was um, Mansfield away. I think we was 2-1 down and then we went 2-2 two, two, and Stecky saved the penalty, didn't he? It was chaos, wasn't it? It was chaos, yeah. Then I, that's the, yeah, I remember everyone was going nuts, it was crazy and um, I thought, this is a bit of me, this, this is good. <laughs> And it was uh, Collo and your mate Hills yeah, yeah, yeah. that day and I think Steve Evans was going mad wanting That's Sheehan it. to be sent off for something yeah, in injury time yeah. but it, it, was, uh, it was such a memorable game to come mm. into. I think you went on a sub at 2-1 down, didn't you? But of that, of that team, do you know how many of the 18 that day went on to play in the Championship? And do you know? In the Premier League as well, I know, yeah. Do you? Okay. I'm going to say... What well, with 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 Luton, yeah. So I'll say eight. Eight. Okay. Eleven. Was it? There's eleven of the eighteen, and two others were Jack Stacey and JJ. Yeah. You mentioned who went on to play in, yeah. play in the Premier League, but five of you from that lineup were still with us at the start of the Premier League season. Yourself, Ali, really? oh, yeah. Shazy, Glen Ray, uh, Glenn Ray. Potsy, which emphasises the squad that Nathan mm. and the board had built at that time because obviously it was a it was a big outlay for the, the board to spend that money to bring yeah. in wasn't it? Yeah for sure you, you could sense it from the from the beginning even you say them names as big characters in there as like um, Maka, uh, Sheehan, um, just old heads who knew what it was like to get to that level so uh, they were very important too, but it, you could feel it straight away. Even she said to me that, oh, that's us, we, we, we should be preparing for the championship. And I thought, this is a bit crazy, we're, we're still in League Two. But he was he, he sort of sensed it as well. Yeah, I mean, just while we're talking about the likes of Shees and Maka, the fact that so many of those players seem to come back to the club in a coaching role as well. Obviously, we've got Hilts as well, and yeah, he's yeah. doing his, his bits with the, the youngsters in the academy. Um, that says a lot about the club as well, doesn't it? Yeah, they're, they, um, they're loved and they know them as a character that suits, suits Luton there. Uh, they give everything, they do, do put the hours in. Uh, Mac has been with the first team all season, you can see he puts a lot of work in. And I know he also speaks to me regularly and he says he does a lot with the young kids and tries to make them better, tries to 
give his advice. Hopefully not his his antics he does sometimes. Some sometimes hopefully you can they can learn from that as well. Definitely. <laughs> On your uh, your form here that first season um, was magnificent until obviously you, you had the injury. But the first goal you scored. Yeah. Against. It was there, I think. It's just there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was notable about it? Uh, it was a header. <laughs> yeah. The only one you scored in your uh, Luton career, yeah. But it was the start of oh. a perfect hat trick against Stevenage. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was a good day. It was good. I remember that's when I got a proper feel of when the Kenny gets going, when the momentum starts turning and it, it, the, the floodgates open, you can get. We, I think we got seven that day, seven one was it? You can, and then I sort of believed if if we can get that momentum in our favour, not many teams in League Two or League One would live with us. Yeah, we did seven, obviously, against Stevenage and Cambridge. Cambridge We've done eight against Yeovil before yeah, yeah, you arrived, yeah, that was, was, wasn't it? it? Um, so things start to go backwards after you came, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, but you ended up with eight goals in 42 appearances before that, obviously, horrendous afternoon yeah. at Colchester. Uh, I mean, Potsy touched on it uh, a couple of weeks ago in his interview when it happened obviously in front of him and, and the effect it can have. Um, and he likened it obviously to the situation with locks this season, yeah. very different circumstances, but seeing something happen on the pitch and how it affected the boys that day, because you were such a crucial part of the team, weren't you? And you were flying. Yeah, it was. It was it was difficult. It's obviously one of them, them things you always, you see them happen before they happen to you and you think you don't like seeing them. I never like seeing leg breaks and things like that. But when it happens to you, it's a bit surreal. It's, uh, you're laying there, you're thinking, no, oh, it's actually happening to me. Yeah. But it was quick. The physios have been brilliant with me ever since. It was a bit of a freak injury, really. I just got my foot stuck and it twisted and it's more of the sight of it than anything. And then went round the back and they clicked it all back in together and then we had to go in the op and I think it was the next day or a few days after but it was um, the journey get coming back I was it was quite quick and smooth and um, Sai, Daz, Chris they all helped with that process and it I can't credit them enough it's not really it's me it's more more of them helping me get through it. Uh, I'll take you back to them because you you arrived here as a young man, you're 25, you were single, no kids, you were... Yeah, no, so, I weren't single, don't say. Well, not single, <laughs> you, you didn't have any kids. Yeah, I did have any kids. And yeah. Simon coming round to, to help you, I always remember him telling me there was a piece of blue tack stuck on your TV screen yeah, and did, he asked yeah. what it was for. Yeah, yeah, I was, it was for Call of Duty. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that was probably the most important thing, just other than football, playing Call of Duty. <laughs> you weren't getting the Italian squad because the, the Italian coach has banned it, hasn't he? Has he? From the, yeah, uh, the well, I don't do it anymore, so. <laughs> no, but back then, as I say, you were a young man. You, yeah. You've, you've, like so many of the lads that came of that era, um, you know, you've, you've grown up as men here, haven't you? Mm. You've become a senior player in the Premier League this season, but how do you think you've changed as a, as a person since you've, uh, since you've been here? Um, yeah, I've matured for sure. I've matured as a player and as well as a person. And kids, I think uh, kids help that, don't they? They help. When you're you're tired, four o'clock in the morning, waking up and things, you just have to be calm. You have to do all the right things. And it's not really, football's obviously important, but that's the most important thing to me, the family. So, um, but yeah, I've definitely matured in a person. There's that lovely picture of you here at the end of the season with Hannah and Henry and Sophia on the yeah. pitch. You, you, in fact, he, he was trying to get it over the line when he kept just... picking it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair, he's more, he's more, he, every time I try and kick the ball about him, he kicks it up. But Soph, my daughter, she was doing like doggies down and up and up and down. So I think she's, she's more into it than him at the moment. <laughs> she's future looting. Yeah. But just going back to that time, you mentioned Simon and Chris and obviously the sports science boys. You have had injuries here. They've helped you massively, haven't they? It's not just been coaches and teammates. Yeah. It's been the, the wider staff that yeah. helped yeah. you throughout. The um, sports science people, especially as well, um, Plant EA, Iceman, he, um, he's been brilliant. He's there, he's indoors. When you're, when you're indoors, especially, um, it's hard because you see everyone go out and you want to be out there with, it, with everyone, especially on nice days. Um, 
So he's there trying to motivate you in bits and bobs, and you need that. You can't be just sitting there like a slob. You want to be working, trying to get yourself out there again. And that's probably been one of the main reasons when, when I do come back, I've done, done well. So it's credit to the yeah, Iceman Jared and, and Canvey for that. I think with, with the injury, um, you mentioned the, the fans and you first saw the Kenny at full pelt when you scored that hat-trick and mm. felt the love from the crowd. But I always remember, because obviously you couldn't go up to Carlisle, could you, for the yeah, yeah, final can, game yeah. when we sealed promotion. But then when we played Forest Green here and you came out the tunnel and they were singing one Luke Berry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you came out on your crutches and there's, there's a picture of you leaning on them with all the boys around you. But that must have been a special moment because it was the first chance you'd really had for the fans mm. to sing your name is, yeah, since, yeah. Uh, since the injury. It that, was, yeah. And that continued, obviously, with West Brom when you made your comeback yeah. ahead of schedule at the start of the following. That was probably the, yeah, that one um, at the Forest King game. And it was, yeah, it was crazy, the one West Brom where we were in the cup. And um, yeah, I, I didn't even think I was going to get on. And when I got on, the ovation was, was mental. And after the game as well, and the travelling support has always been, since League Two, it's always been absolutely amazing. This season especially, it was, even when we're struggling, they were, they were behind us all the way. And that's not easy for, uh, you can get frustrated with, with the players, with the team at times, and it's not easy to do that. So massive, massive credit to them. Yeah, we'll come back to the fans in a little while, but that season in League One obviously was sort of split in two really because we had the first half of the season, we struggled to start with, but then found our feet. Uh, you were actually out injured again with yeah. a, a different injury, weren't you? Yeah, um, my knee. But when you came back in, I think you just had a few sub appearances and made your first start at Sheffield Wednesday when Nathan left. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was all uh, up in the air, but I think you'll probably agree, those five months or so with Mick in charge and, and uh, the unbeaten run, it was such a memorable time, wasn't it? It was, it was. That was it was it was incredible that season. That's probably, if not my favourite season here, where we had such a great group, all young, all hungry, and wanting to do well for the club. And it was just the momentum with the, the stadium, the the fans, the 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 players. It was just all together as one. And um, it was a brilliant season to win that league. I, I don't know what points it was a 90 something 93 maybe 94 I can't remember but it's not easy it's not easy to do with with what what the manager leaving midway through bits and bobs like that and to do that was was great Mick just fast he just he just steered it he did yeah and yeah the crowd was singing his name every week I mean mm. they still do now but the atmosphere around the the, the ground was was unbelievable mm. and Credit to you boys, and probably you were still one of the relatively younger ones then, but the senior lads mm. as well, the likes of Cheese, Macca, yeah. Colo, they steered it with him, didn't they? For sure, for sure. It's it's not easy because especially with Nathan, who's such a great manager who's left, it's um, it's not easy to keep that momentum going, and that is credit to Nathan as well for bringing them players in and making sure we do the right things every single day. And Mick knew that as well. That's why he came and he just kept on that progression. And it's easy for a player to dog it off or bits and bobs, but every single player every day was trying to commit to getting that promotion. And another goal I want to mention, because the, the, your first goal back after the injury yeah. um, was at the other end of the ground, the road end, and it was a, it was a lovely little swivel past yeah. a future England international. Yeah. Uh, stuck yeah. it in the bottom corner. That was there. That was great. I remember celebrating with JJ as well. It was good. It was yeah, it was a great feeling. We we I think that was one of our best games that season. To be fair, we was, I think it might have been four nil, three nil, or something four nil, and they were up there with us as well. So it was a big game, and we always felt that at home. Any team, I think there was times in in the season where teams would say, oh, I can't remember the game, but it said that we're we're the best team in the league, or we're better than these, and we. Would turn them over quite comfortably, and it'd, it'd, it'd give us even more confidence. Yeah, it became the, the teams like Luton tag, sort yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah. maybe more in the championship, but uh, but it became that thing. So we were always the smallest club, yeah. probably in any division, you know, from League Two upwards, maybe, maybe not League, league One, but we've always had that backs to the wall and, and underdog mentality. Mm, it's probably the character of players 
we have and had over the years. We enjoy that underdog kind of thing, and um, we don't we don't um, we we don't feel like we're underdog for any game. We feel like we should be winning every game. But the, on the outside, people think, "Oh, these are Luton. We can turn these over." But it's not the case. I mentioned the future England international. There. That was Ben White. At, yeah, yeah. He was on loan at, at Peterborough at the time. Uh, once we got into the championship, you, you played against a couple of other, well, one sort of England great in Wayne Rooney, but there was another future England international that you came up against in midfield here at Kenilworth Road in the championship. Did I? Who? You ever played against Jude Bellingham? I yes. thought oh, so maybe, I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> but he was probably about 12 then. <laughs> <laughs> he was 16 when he came in Birmingham. Yeah. But that start of the championship season, it was difficult for you, wasn't it? Because you, you weren't in the team yeah, under yeah. Graham Jones. I think, ironically, going back to Barnsley for you, I remember sitting in the stand and you were left out of the 18 and it was just before transfer deadline. And yeah. I remember you saying, you just want to play. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think I said to you, you're not going anywhere, are you? Mm. Well, I just, you know, I just want to play. I don't want to sit in the stand. Mm. And that's always been your mentality, hasn't it? Whatever level you've been at, whether it's the conference or the yeah. level, you just want to play. And, and you could have left at that stage, but, you know, credit to you that you, you've seen it through. Yeah, I've, that's, I think that's everyone's players' mentality, isn't it? They want to play. But you still, you need to understand the situation that moaning and things isn't going to get you anywhere. So I've always sort of, every level, I've always start, st tried to work my way into the team, trying to get into the manager's head to, to try and play me. Um, I'm not the kind of guy to go in and smash the door down and say you should be playing me. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. It's um, more just trying to work my way into the team on the training ground. If he gives me five minutes, try and be the best I can for five minutes and then work my way into the team like that. But um, yeah, even then it, it took me, even that season, it took me a while for the manager then to play me, eventually did, but sometimes it can take six months, sometimes it can take six weeks. So it, it's not an easy process, but the main thing is just trying to, trying to stay consistent and being in the manager's head and manager's mind. And you did, to your credit again, get back in the team and the results started to turn before COVID, really, yeah. we, we picked up some, some decent results here and on the road. Um, then COVID hit. Yeah. Strange time for everybody, but Nathan came back and you scored against Barnsley here and played a big part in the Great Escape. I mean, that was, although they were strange times, it was also a memorable time. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was brilliant. We, um, we've, everyone thought we was out, done and, done and dusted for that season. But then, like I say, with momentum, it just something changed just before we had a little bit of a spell where we were getting points here and there. And then Nathan came back and then changed it all and, and just kept that going and sort of gave us that belief he, he gave us before, before he went to um, Stoke, I think it was. So the, the fans weren't here, but the, the, the performances were great. And if they were here, it would have been even easier, I thought. Um, we would have won. We would have stayed up quite comfortably. But luckily enough, final day, what was it? Three two, I think it was. But it was a, we went one 0 down. It was t it was it was nervous. It's horrible. It's I would. We only had one it, shot on target. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Three two. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like this season. They're not funny. They're not fun at all. Relegation battles. It's just grinding out as many points as you can. But then the, the, gradually we improved every yeah, season. Mid table, yeah. playoff finish losing up at Huddersfield. I mean, that was, that was devastating, wasn't it? It was, it was. Because the injuries had, had cost us. Mm -hmm. and, and, but there was a determination when you came back. Yeah. Like, I think, although you weren't here, but from the League Two season when we lost in the playoffs and you came the following summer, yeah. there was just that determination mm -hmm. to, to go one step further. It was, it was. There, were, um, there was always talk about that season, the season after people were saying things like, oh, Luton, and they there'll be there'll be a team down the bottom now they've they've um they've had their season where they might go up but in house we were calm as we knew what we had to do we knew what was capable in the championship season if we were on it and um we were we came in with a real real determination to do well and from that season we we started we always seemed to start a little bit slow but then when that 
that just clicks. We went on a great run during the end of the season and, and, and we made playoffs quite comfortably and we carried that on into the playoffs brilliantly. Obviously another change of manager for Nathan leaving to go to Southampton. Rob coming in, you know, the, the, there's that great narrative like we had with Mick taking over, it was Mick's sort of redemption. But yeah. Rob having managed Watford and sacked by yeah. him, coming in and then taking over. Again, not really changing too much. No. Maybe a few tweaks here and there, but the players had got us into that position. Yeah. Uh, and he just trusted you, didn't he? He did. He, was, he put his stamp on it for sure. He did. He, he improved us in, in his way. And um, there was no, no shock when, when he came in. We kept that run going. We improved on that run as well. And we was a real force. We, we, we were just not bullying teams, but our style of play was dominating them. And um, they could have easily, because we finished in the playoffs, I think maybe three games prior to actually the, the season finishing. And it could have easily been Oh, we'll, it, we'll change the team here, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll, we'll, we'll rest some players, we'll ease off. It, wasn't, it was totally different today. It was like, we need to win again, we need to do this again. And that is probably one of the most key things why we've done so well into the playoffs. Even the one we lost the first leg, but we were playing well, the momentum. We, we knew if, if that team, if our team turns up here on the second leg, we'll, we'll do fine, and we did. And that night against Sunderland, I mean, that was Kenilworth Road rocking, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. and, and obviously Wembley, you called Wembley the greatest day of, of your career. Um, it's probably the greatest day of anybody's <laughs> we, yeah. we were there, wasn't it? What, what did it mean to you? Um, it was, I, I, it, it means a lot for me, but I just knew, because I've been here for so long coming up, I knew how much it felt for everyone. Um, the fans, the players, the the staff, the board, everyone. So it's that was what was on my mind the most. I just we just want to do it for them. I want to do it for everyone. So it 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 was it was a brilliant day. It was I always remember that day. Everything about it. It was the late kickoff where it felt a bit like you're waiting around for ages. The um, when I was watching on the bench, it was I could feel how it felt for the fans. It's, it's horrible, and then when you come on, it was all right. <laughs> so it was weird. It was the calmest you ever. <laughs> literally, it was. I felt fine. I felt this is actually not too bad now. It's this the emotion of sitting there, so draining, just watching, waiting around. You just want to play, and um, thankfully we we got it done. I mean, you you, you talk about and. Um, Potsy's spoken about it as well, almost like the, the military preparation for the penalties. Yeah. You know, you walked up there like, I think you, you described it as like you were playing in the park. Yeah. Well, you walked was. up there, took the penalty away, but you all knew to, to the step you were mm. making and the blade of grass that you, mm. you were treading on, yeah. what you were going to do. It was, it was the, the, the thing before that, I was waiting, I was, I was nervous and bits and bobs. That's the, the weird thing about it. You'd think it'd be the other way around. But um, when I started walking, it was absolutely fine. So that is down to the staff and the, it's easy to take 50 penalties a day and do it, oh, I'll do it this way, I'll go this way, I'll, I'll change my mind. It's not really like that. It's make sure you do it six times, preparation spot on, and do it match, match quality. And that's how, that's how we did it. And thankfully it paid off. Um, when the penalty shootout was over and we, we're up, yeah. What was the feeling? I know there, there was a lot of the celebrations were there. But there was also a lot of checking in on locks and how he yeah. was, uh, and, and you know, people Carlton. I remember being on the phone in the centre circle, just FaceTiming him. But once everybody knew he was all right, yeah, it was some party, wasn't it? It was. It was. We um, that was the main thing. We wasn't 100% sure how locks was. Even during the game, we wasn't sure because we, well, I don't know if I thought we might have twisted his leg or I didn't have a clue. That's it, none of us knew at the time. No, no, so really we didn't. When he went down, we, I think in half time, we was checking sign bits and bobs, making sure he was okay. And he just said he's gone, he's gone to the hospital. So, um, and then afterwards, we were all hoping he was okay and thankfully he did. He, um, he felt good, so, and he was awake and everything. Um, but then after that, we, well, now we, we got all the good news and he wished us all like well and we could have a good time. We went to the hotel and had a real good bit of food and everything, didn't we? And had a party, really. 
and he, the sad thing for Locks as well was he missed out on his trip to Portugal to play golf yeah, last yeah, summer. Yeah, he did. You were just telling me before we started this a little funny story about yeah. you seeing him in Portugal a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so I, I was in Portugal the other day and um, I hit such a bad shot that I was on the wrong fairway and um, uh, he's, I didn't know any Locks was there or anything so I was um, sitting on the fairway hoping he'd go through and um, he was like, no, I didn't, I didn't know anyone was there. He just went, oh, just go through, go through. So I'm, I'm like, oh, no, I've got to actually take this shot. These are all going to watch me. So I'm about to take it. And I said, Bez, Bez. And um, turn around and this locks. So I'm like, ah. <laughs> and we all have a hug and everything, have a chat. And I'm thinking, go on, just go through. So I could <laughs> but then I had to take the shot. And luckily, I, he's got a video of it. So luckily, I've got a good shot in front of him. Well, it's good to know he's getting some exercise. But yeah. Before we go on to the Premier League season, I, I'll touch on characters, because obviously Locks has been a massive character. Yeah. Hilts, um, you know, your best mate here, probably. Yeah, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, Johnny Mullins was yeah, here yeah. in your first season, was, was a great character. I know you've been to Sonny Bradley's wedding recently. Yeah. There's a picture of you looking all smart with, with Matty Pearson. Um, you know, there's been so you, there's been good characters, good people, and you've got loads of friends, haven't you, from from your time here? For sure, the that's the, one of the main things as well is there's been good people at this club, and there's always been good people, and um, that's down to recruitment, isn't it? Really, in, in, in recruiting the right people, and every single player I've played with here has been a great character in their own way, and they're all different, all different people. We're all a bit weird. We're all we're all. But we all want the same thing, want to do well on the football pitch, do well for the fans, do well for the club. And we've all got that in common, what I think is very, very important. I just joked about you looking smart at, uh, at Sonny's wedding because you, you're always picked out as the worst dress I am, yeah. in the squad. And I can picture you coming into training with your uh, with trainers on with paint all over them. And I've got an image of Hiltz's car parked up in the car park with stuff that he's got to take to the tip but, <laughs> but you're all just normal lads yeah. who are lucky enough to be playing football for a living but you've got you've all got that down to you know down to earth take on life and and you've enjoyed yourselves haven't you as well while you've been doing this sort of amazing yeah. story throughout english football yeah i'm not i'm not like cars as well i'm not into cars not into clothes so i'm not going to spend loads of money on cars and clothes so <laughs> um but i I yeah I just I just like playing football. It's not really anything more than that. I'm not too fussed about anything else. I just like being out outside playing football, enjoying myself. Which leads us nicely into the Premier League season. I think the best interview on match of the day this season or last season, whichever way we want to describe it, was yours after scoring that goal here against Forest. And it's in Luke Berry. It's a fantastic finish from Luke Berry, his first Premier League goal. Well, first and foremost, you're on match of the day tonight, oh, no, and that's, no, no. you're taking a great pleasure from this being is, on there. This is a dream, this, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and that, that's, what, that's what happens when you score your first Premier League goal. Talk me through it. I know, this, when I scored in the conference, it went like this. It was just get home. <laughs> but, um, no, it was good. It was a great feeling. Um, it was, the main thing was to get the point, really. We, we couldn't lose today, and thankfully we got the draw. You just created history. You know, you... Mm. you the first Luton Town player to score in all four divisions in English football. Yeah. Um, for you personally, it was the top five divisions, but obviously you'd also scored in the Eastern Counties for yeah. Cambridge Regional College. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you, you, you know, you, that's, you're in the history books. That must mean a hell of a lot to you. It didn't really, no, it didn't really sink in straight away, to be honest, because it was all about trying to get, we wanted to win the game, what was a, what was a frustrating thing. Um, but it was, yeah, it's, it's a weird one because I never really thought I'd score in the Premier League. So I didn't, it never really, it probably, only until I finish, I probably really appreciate it. Because when you're, when you're in it every day and bits and bobs, all you want to do is like, I scored two, but I wanted, you want three, then you want four, then you want five. It's, it's weird. So um, it was a great day. Like being on match today um, for the thing was, was weird. Even getting interviewed for it, I was thinking, this is going to be a match today, this is weird. And, and you, when you're a child and, and growing up, you see players on there, you think, that is so cool, isn't it? you got, um, I don't know, Alan Shearer getting interviewed when he scores 
or Rooney or these kind of players and then somehow I worm away on there. <laughs> There's Lee Berry. <laughs> Kid I saw as a 16 year old at Cambridge standing up in the corner yeah, and I, yeah. you know I was so proud of you that day and I know so many other people at the club were because well one it, it got us an important point but similar with Shazy coming on and making his Premier League debut on the final day you know they're, they're, you boys have been here throughout and to have that core of you all together has been hugely important hasn't it? Yeah we've we've kept that's down to the board and everyone, but we've kept a real big key uh, group of players who have always sort of stayed together. As you still got Pelly and Shazy, like you say, who will carry that on. And um, we've all just buy, bought into what the club are about and, and we've just tried to do our best. Sadly, obviously, our best wasn't quite good enough in the Premier League. It was the best league in, in the world for a reason. Mm. Um, yeah, you must have some great memories to take from it. We mentioned the goals, but just getting to that level and, and achieving that schoolboy dream, really. It was, yeah. It was. We like I speak to people. You see, Luton fans. They come and chat to you sometimes, and they also they're also proud of us how well we did. And even random fans as well who who say, "Oh, the uh, such a good good um, good effort we gave it." And, and we were really unlucky not to stay up. So it's 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 only just made enhance the club, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, the fans you said earlier have been unbelievable throughout your journey here, especially this season. Every, after every game, win, lose or draw, that re evasion was just like hairs on the back of the neck. Time, yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. We some some away days we. We we're coming off so dejected because maybe we concede a late goal or we're leading, then we lose and bits like that. And you, you, you think the the fans might we're clapping. We think the fans might be a bit down as well, but they're not. They're upbeat. They're singing. They're the loudest, loudest um, voices in the stadium. There was no, oh, we could could never hear their fans. So it's just massive credit to them that they they um, they stuck with us for the whole season. And, and hopefully for the boys staying, hopefully they can do that next season because it'll be massive. They've got a new song for you this season, haven't they? Yeah, <laughs> I heard that the other day. Well, a few weeks ago, someone said it to me. I was like, oh, OK, I've got to listen out for it. And I heard it, it was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, what would, I mean, what would you like the fans' abiding memory of you to be, uh, you know, Luke Perry as a Luton Town player? Um, just a, just gave it a good go. Like, um, uh, there's bits of the. It's just the main thing that I was a good person. I gave it a good go. I'm not too fussed about anything else, really. You definitely gave it a good go, and I know you will do as well. Moving on, I think Rob said he, he loves you, and he's got so much respect for you, and he respects the fact that you want to play. Yeah, and. Obviously, you've got that new chance now at Charlton, reunited with Nathan. But how, how much was Rob's understanding in that instance? Yeah, you know, as, a, yeah. As, a, as a manager, and how has he been with you? He's, yeah, he's been brilliant. He's he's been brilliant since I've come here. Um, he's always said to me that I'm an important player to the team, but I, I I wasn't playing, and I wasn't I haven't been playing consistently for the whole time he's been here. But I've always felt that. I can come on and make an impact and try and help the team and bits like that. And it's it's easy for him to say, "Oh, you 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 can move on. You're fine. There's no there's no problem. There's no problem." But in my heart, like you say, he felt that I was a I was an important player in the team, and it's it's hard to explain that he's he's just such a great guy. He's he's done so much this season to to. To keep us believing that we can stay up, he's he's improved every single player in in the team. He's improved the team as well. He's he's just a brilliant, brilliant person. He called me as well straight before I was going to go, and and um, he he was just I can't I just can't describe how brilliant of a person is. You speak to him all the time. That he's it's he's 
just such a family person who just wants you to do well. He want it, he's no, there's no bitterness, there's no nothing. He just wants you to do well. He wants you to do, make the right decision. And the fans can see that with his interviews and bits and bobs that he just cares about you. And it's not, it's, it's easy, to, easy to say that, but not everyone does that. Not everyone cares about you as a person as well as a footballer. And, and he does. I think everybody would agree with that. And everybody will wish you well as well as I'm sure you do, the club going forward, but wish you well at, at Charlton. As I said, reunited with Nathan. Yeah. Um, we don't want you to come back here and do us any damage. So, uh, you know, we look out for cup draws and, and you yeah, know, yeah. various promotions and what have you, but your, um, your legacy here will live on um, and you will obviously always be remembered as a, as a great player and played a huge part in Luton Town history. Um, it's going to be emotional, isn't it, if you ever do come back? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be funny because I remember playing here before I come here and I thought I'd love to play here because it'd be great. It would be so good that just the, the, the intensity of the ground and stuff, I always thought it'd be so good. And, and playing here now and then coming back, I'd feel it would just be yeah, I don't think it'd feel like that because I'm so used to it, but it'd just feel, I'd just be so, it would be so happy. I'd just be so happy coming back here and, and um, hopefully, I don't know, draw probably. I think that'd be good for everyone, but it would just, yeah, I, I don't know what ovation, hopefully I'd get a nice ovation, but I'd, I'd give everyone a clap after the game and things. Cause, and it would just be good to see everyone in, uh, around the club as well, because everyone's, everyone's all done so much for me. I think we'll all, um, we'll all give you a great reception if you ever do come back like that. But um, you certainly gave it a good go as a Luton player. So yeah. thanks for all the great memories, Bez. Thank you. And, uh, and good luck at Charlton. Thank you very much. <laughs>you said the first 18 months here at Luton were the best of your life and you're now extending your time here at Kenilworth Road of us. How pleased are you with that? Really pleased. Um, yeah, it's been the best 18 months of my professional career. Um, we've had so much fun, ups and, let's be honest, downs. Um, 